Ooh, that's a nice one. I like it. Yay! Oh, nice. the between the sheets like the Aussies. When you hop on the try, make sure your colors correct. Make sure your corporate or they'll be calling you. Oh. My god. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jake from TPA Moss and bringing you another review of a, something that you do not see every single time you go to an op, aka a unicorn. And you know we specialize in unicorns. So, here I'm bringing you a Taggart ML36. But wait, the stock is missing. The stock is right here. Sorry, I found it. It's an HP8 now. We had to do it to him. So this is actually going to be a little bit of a two-part review where we're actually going to talk about the HPA kit as well as the Max CO2 kit. Because in order to get the HPA kit, you actually have to buy the standalone chassis. Then you do the Max CO2 if you want. Or you can just straight jump into HPA kit. So what happens? Let's start with Max CO2. So what the, what is the Max CO2? Max CO2, instead of running one CO2 cartridge up in an aiming compartment allows you to run two in a normal M4 buffer tube. So what it is, there's actually a compartment, a piercing car, uh, cartridge right here, and on the end, as you twist it, it will actually put, you put them, I'm sorry, I should step back a little bit. You put the two CO2s back to back to each other. The first one gets pierced right through the front of the buffer tube, and the other one gets actually pierced through as you screw them in fully. Now, what does that do? Um, it just allows you to have more shots, really. I stand on a perfect weather, so a room temperature, which is 72 degrees Fahrenheit calculated. Um, this thing can get around seven to eight shots per CO2. So, in a perfect scenario, perfect control weather with two, you're gonna get 14 to 16. Um, however, my, I, obviously I've had the max CO2. What my, I actually, did not enjoy the CO2, max CO2 kit. Um, after about 30 CO2s, 32, between 30 and 40 CO2s, I've noticed that the actual piercing cartridge, the one that you screw it on the back to actually push the CO2s into each other and pierce them simultaneously, got very, very dull. So what ended up happening is uh, the one on the, on the front right here pierced the CO2 cartridge while the other one did not. And there was actually not enough pressure built up within that buffer tube system going into the actual main system. And I was only getting maybe five to six shots. So uh, for the 120 bucks that the Max CO2 is, well, plus the, ma the chassis, which is another, I believe, 315, um, I, I would just jump straight into HPA if you really want something else from this thing. Now... When you, when you get the HBA kit, um, what it's going to come with is going to come with a tank, a proprietary regulator made by Tacken, and a butt stop for it. As well as this end cap, which allows you to degas and gas the system back and forth, as well as a different plate up front. If you notice in your Tacken MO36, that one, the no one you normally get with is a uh, Silver, I believe it's a different material than this. I'm not sure why they did, they use a different material, but that was on the instructions to install, as well as a different aiming reticle. Now, why the different aiming reticle? Because the original one that comes with that's what stores the CO2, and there's actually a certain you know there's flow allowance in that in that compartment. So in order to get the most out of this, you actually just get a new aiming compartment and you replace the whole thing. Now, when it comes to installing this thing, so when you first receive your HPA kit, you have your buffer tube, everything on there. What you have to do is you actually have to undo the castle nut and unscrew the whole thing. You will see that when you start unscrewing it, you're going to see a whole cart uh, piercing cartridge, everything. Don't worry about none of that. Just store it. You're good. You're going to insert the HPA cartridge into here. Um, you're going to take off the aiming compartment. And you're going to replace it with the one that's given to you, the ML36 one. As well as, this, this should actually be your last step I'm going to, before I speak to that. Um, you're going to take the ML36 off your chassis. You are going to remove, 
Actually, you're going to put, put it in fire with obviously no gas in it. You're going to hold the trigger, you're going to open it, and you're going to push right on the nozzle and then let go of the trigger. If you guys see that actually nozzle is set back right now, and actually if I press the trigger now, it resets itself. So what happens is I see a lot of issue when people come into the shop and they ask, oh, you know, I lost these and that when they try to take it apart. Because this is spring-loaded, as soon as they loosen these four screws, the whole thing just goes flat. And now they lost a bunch of parts. So make sure you do this. Again, pull on the trigger, take your index finger, press right in the middle, let go, but still hold it, and you're good. Now, remove, <clears throat> remove the four screws, and just tap it lightly. Get the, get the Allen key in there and just tap it lightly, and the whole, the whole plate will just fall out. That's when you replace with the ML36 HBA plate. You put that in, make sure you use a soft tip hammer. Please do not use a metal hammer or any of those sorts. Soft tip hammers are literally $15 on Amazon. If you have a grenade launcher like this, I assume you can afford a soft tip hammer. Um, just type it in lightly and just start screwing it from the other side. Make sure this is flush. If this is not flush, then you will not be able to actually close your ML36. Um, once that's complete, you're going to have to take the main, I guess, it wouldn't be a really a nozzle, but uh, hmm, I wouldn't even know what they really call this, it's, I guess, a valve. You take the original valve out, you stick the ML36 HPA kit one in there, and you just tighten it, hand tighten, no certain torque required, and you're good. You're all set. So then what you have to do is you obviously have to charge the tank and screw it in. So when this is pointing towards you, that means you're going to pierce the tank. So how to do this? Pull this down and if you see, I just press that little nozzle right in there. Start screwing it in. And then when you're like three quarters there, push this in. Maybe a little bit less. There you go. That's because I didn't press the trigger and the whole thing was engaged from the start. Um, yeah, so it's not broken. Don't worry, guys. Everything's under control. This is a professional environment. We're fine. Um, so the tank is a, it's a little 12 cubic inch tank. I'm able to have around 3,000 PSI, so actually we use the compressor, we got it to 2,900 uh, PSI, and I was able to consistently get 60 to 60 to 65 shots. After 65 shots, it really started to dull down when it comes to the pressure inside the system, and um, and it just they weren't going really far or anything. We were just using peckers just to kind of fool around and shoot. Um, so around, I would say room temperature, 60 shot, consistent, good. Now, the huge con with this is uh, because this tank is a proprietary tank and uses the special regulator given by Tagging, which they do not sell. I'm sure where you're going with this. You know where I'm going with this. Um, you're bound to this tank. However, we were allowed by Tagin to actually start modifying these tanks in order to allow bigger tanks. Um, I was actually on Milson West in Saratov a battle, I was actually running a 40, 45 cubic inch tank. It literally looked like a huge bulge. But I ran that tank for multiple ops at 4,000 PSI. And I can tell you I shot more than 300 tags. And I still wasn't even going nowhere near empty. So I think for a normal day op, one day op, this tank is perfect. I think if you're going for something harder like Milson West, um, I would say really no some west only where it's 40 hours non-stop. I would get a bigger tank, which is possible. I would, instead of 12, I would get a 24. So you're not, you know, getting back heavy with a 45 cubic inch tank. Um, and that's really it. I mean, this thing, ever since I've switched to HPA system, I had zero issues. I didn't get any leaks. I, nothing ever really went wrong with it. The last time I actually lubed it was when I first switched it to HBA, and that was almost a half a year ago, if not significantly more. 
and it's still going strong. I have no issues. Um, but if you guys have any questions in the comments below for this kit exactly, uh, we because we're indoors, we couldn't really show, and it's actually dark outside. We actually couldn't show you how good this thing is. But if you stick around and you see some of our videos, I'm sure you can see how far this thing even shoots, um, even in a very very cold weather. I was people were mad that day. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions regarding this kit, how to install it, um, pros and cons, even if, if I come up with even more, if you guys have any pros and cons towards yourself, please comment down below. Let us know. Uh, we're here to help you, you know, uh, when it comes to tagging products. Uh, if you guys need tagging products, uh, my name is Jacob. I'm at TPA Milson. We have, I actually travel all the way down to Mississippi from Connecticut. All the Milson West, uh, Lion Claws, Masados, and actually deliver hand deliver tags to people. So if you guys you know are in need of tags, I can be your supplier. You know. But thank you for watching, guys. Like again, like, subscribe for more unicorn reviews. And if you guys have any questions, comments, feel free to comment down below.